Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. We are looking at Retronaut from JMG Sand through United Plugins. I had seen this around and to be honest, when I first saw it, I thought that is absolutely not a Benedict kind of thing. Uh, to cut a long story short before I make it long again, it's actually a very cool thing, but not in the way that it's sold. There's so much purpleness and retroness and making the past come alive again and all this kind of, well, about it that I was seriously, seriously put off and I think seriously, seriously misled about what the product actually is and where its real strengths are. Now, while I fully understand that the whole market's about making everything purple and lasery and like a bad Knight Rider episode that probably would never have gone to air, um, it's not actually selling the strengths of the device at all. It's actually using one of its extra abilities, which is legitimate. But it's using it for its weakness as its strength. Now, I appreciate in marketing, like, oh, yes, the lovely taste of beer, the wonderful taste of cigarettes. Yes, there can be value in marketing the, the complete opposite of what a thing is. But the strength that this has is almost completely glossed over in the rush to almost fib about what it really is. So I thought that it was garbage wear and just bypassed it. Because it's like, the last thing the world needs is another one of those stupid things. But in reality, there are quite a lot of things that this does really well with some passable ability in the thing that they say it will do. Because nothing can ever do much more than a passable ability in what it, will say, what it primarily sells itself to do. But most of it is about selling a fantasy. And I know I always go on about this, but as a community, we need to do an awful lot better by really working on the honour of music, the beauty of music, rather than fibbing about, well, fibs with regards to what's not even music at all. So the product actually turns out to be a wonderful product. Whoever did the marketing, I'd take them out the back, you know, stuff a whole lot of purple in their mouths and hit them with a laser, you know, maybe that will amuse them. Or maybe they'll realise how stupid and insulting it is. As I say, JMG Sand, they seem to appear only through United plugins. I don't really know how United plugins works. I've seen them around. But most of those buy all of your shiz in the one box kind of environments really don't appeal to me. I would rather deal with a developer directly, build a relationship and all of that. But whatever, I understand the advantages to certain developers being in shops. Uh, but it does lead to this kind of stuff. Also, you've got the extreme introductory discount. Um, I think this wasn't released too long ago, but I think it was long enough ago that um, perhaps introductory discounts may not be relevant anymore. When does that expire? Again, that just to me is a strike against the credibility of the product. Hence reasons to not really look at it. If it's well priced in the first place, why do we need to chop a whopping 73% off it? Okay, I know there's no extra cost, particularly in selling two more versions of the item when it's digital, but it means that we're devaluing the real value of the object. If it's really worth, I think it's too small for me to read right now, that amount of money, why are we putting a different price on it? All we're doing is saying this thing's worth 24 until it goes on to another sale, in which case it's worth nine, in which case, well, is it worth anything at all? Which is actually completely untrue. So why are we using such terrible marketing? So Retronaut, if that's the price, yep, it's, it's well priced. If you get past the marketing to actually work out where its real strengths are. So the question has to be what you're probably asking, but Benedict, what is it? Well, they pitch it as some kind of wayback machine that's gonna take our dead duck digital sounds, and this is set to be as bad as it can be, so that we can then highlight the real strength of this device to turn it on and then suddenly it goes into a lo-fi kind of drunkenness, the last thing the world needs. And that's not an obsession with not liking lo-fi. I don't like lo-fi because it has no, it adds no value anywhere other than, and if you want to do that, bully to you, but add some value, add some, some real value. This doesn't add value on its default. 
all it does is that. And the first thing that put me off was, was like, well, hang on, it's only got a kind of a single direction LFO. It's not wandering. It's just up and down, up and down. So I'm like, what's the point of that? That's really lame, especially for so many knobs and buttons. Then I looked at it a little bit more and realized, hang on, this is only using a fraction of its capabilities. So if we take to what it's really designed to do, Wow, that's actually hard to achieve. This is kind of like a Logan string machine type thing. As you can see, the donor is something like a Logan string machine sort of a situation. But on its own, it really doesn't get there. As is the nature with these sort of old string machines, they don't get you very far. This has the ability to sound a lot more happening, but I deliberately removed that to give this the best go that it could. And we get a really, really nice ensemble effect. And I could probably very comfortably say that in all my years in Dorville, this is the best ensemble I have ever heard. And I don't own many because most of the time I play these things that say, oh, we're going to make you sound like a Logan string machine or a Selena or whatever. I'm, I'm only using the names as indicative. I'm not saying this sounds like. They don't go anywhere near it at all, but this does. And you can say, yeah, Benedict, but that's exactly what the marketing's about, to take your, your shitty sounding synth and suddenly make it sound like a real Logan. Um... Okay, I'll sort of get you there, but we're, we're missing the real strength of the machine, which is that it is a lovely, and then it turns out incredibly versatile, four-voice chorus, or better named probably an ensemble, from the way that it takes this one really anemic sound, and delivers something really lovely from it. So what it is, actually, is a four-voice ensemble with the ability to do some really cool other things. Yes, we can get into providing some tapey, warbly, machiney kind of degradation, but we've also got a lot of control over how the LFOs relate to each other. And this is one I really like because it's the kind of thinking that I put into my own devices. We can... We can turn it into a reverb. So if we pull this down, pull this up. And that's a real Benedict kind of a reverb. So there's an awful lot about this which is hidden until you're able to, to sit down and work out what it is to a fair extent for yourself. There is a manual, but it's a, this knob does that kind of thing. And yes, it was vaguely useful, but one of the good things is that if you have any idea what you're doing, and unfortunately this is pitched to those who don't seem to know what they're doing, but if you know what you're doing, there's very little to understand. It is reasonably well presented that it doesn't take long to work out what it is. Reading the manual is only confirming things that I had already assumed through playing with it. That's a good thing. It's architecture and presentation once we get past the stupidity of it is actually really, really good. It's a very nice device, one which I think I'm very eager to take into my world. I have just finished an album, so there was no place to actually be trying this in, in, in battle, uh, but getting it, I'm like, oh, this is super cool once I get over the difficulties. So we've got to be aware that when we first turn this thing on, it's not pitching to its strengths. It's pitching to one of its minor abilities, and we should move on from there. The other thing that I should and do need to raise fairly early is that I encountered one, if not two, actual bugs in using this. Uh, as usual, I wanted to do my review in Reason, because Reason's what I do. Uh, and unfortunately, there was a 100% um, crash-proneness 
through this uh, and I did send off to, through the official support forum and I did get a response just acknowledging that they are acknowledging my issue. Um, what, where, I don't know. But please just be aware, if you are a Reason user, please test this first or at least check that it's not on 1.0.0 because if you go to right click and reset, which we'll look at uh, a, a particular control, then chances are this is what's going to happen to you. And that that's sad. I don't blame them at all for having an issue in Reason because of their chance they didn't test in Reason. And Reason does play some things a little differently and can have issues. I've just finished a, uh, a, a new device for uh, someone somewhere, soon to be seen, and I actually had issues completely unexpectedly in Reaper. Reaper refused to scan the plugin despite it working in Reason Studio One everywhere else and having formally worked in Reaper. My only guess is that uh, Reaper made a little bug uh, on a one of their many, many, many updates and the solution turned out to be um, putting an underscore rather than a space. So you can have issues in, in hosts, but please just be aware that there is that issue, which could be fatal if you're a Reason user, another reason why I couldn't throw it into battle right now. And also I have found that when pressing the mono button, which collapses everything to mono, the output level goes up, which is not a terrible thing, but seeing there isn't a, an output level thing, because generally levels seem pretty well managed, this one wasn't managed. So as you put the two, you sum the left and right together, you're going to go up by 3 or 6 dB, and you have to drop that, and they seem to have forgotten. Again, the bug was acknowledged as that I have acknowledged it. Um, what happens when, I can't say, because it's too early in the process to say. But please... Just be aware, primarily if you're a Reason user, I don't seem to have had any problems in Reaper with def with default value. It does seem to set things back where they belong without any apparent overt issues. Might as well run through the good and bad, and then we move to the more interesting part of the program, which is where we walk through device, show what it does, how, when, why, and all of that. So my good and bad. My good is that it is a really lovely quad ensemble chorus, and it is lovely. I, 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 I'm excited by that and disappointed that I can't run it in reason. Uh, I'd start a piece just to, to spend some time with this. That seems really, really nice. As I said before, it's the first time I've turned on a device like this and actually felt Logan, Selena, uh, despite all of the free marketing from other people. Something about the architecture, the way that um, JMG has set this up, is absolutely aces. He's beaten my attempts to doing it. So, so great respect in that sense. So that leads to the second one, is that I think that it has a great architecture because it delivers things that are a real ad. And that's before we get into any of the silly marketing stuff about taking us back to the past and blah, blah, blah. Just as that chorus with extra abilities, including cool reverb, is really good, which is, of course, the third one, that it is actually surprisingly versatile uh, from doing things like adding a little bit of drift and grit to the signal out to a nice little character reverb. All of these are great things, and to me, the sign of, uh, of a very nice uh, device architect. Uh, and I'm vaguely jealous because I didn't achieve anything quite like this myself. I've gone down very, very similar roads, um, including with, um, with Hertz Multiplier. Is a very similar road to this. I wasn't setting out to create a, a, a Selena Ensemble, uh, but if it was in there, I was delighted to have it but this kind of does that straight away. The bad, well, yes, all that purple marketing that I talked about before, absolutely mis-selling the device and um, and effectively kind of preying on the stupid. Uh, I mean, the stupid can't help how stupid they are because they're stupid, uh, but feeding that kind of stupidity, saying that that kind of stupidity is cool and, and, and the height of everything that's proneness, really. I don't know who did that, but smack, smack, smack. It is at times prone to being a little clunky. So a couple of times whilst using it, I'm, I'm already thinking, hmm, this reminds me of Melda. 
And I know that they've got a lot of capability in their technology. So I went over and I had a look. Do they have some kind of, uh, you know, ability to put together a, an exported VST device? And I can't see it. But then blow me down when the response from support came back, it was referencing Melder as well. I, I don't know. Does Melder have some kind of, not shown to everybody from the front of their site, uh, a thing like Reactor or something where you can put together Melder Lego blocks, skin it, and then export it? If so, very interesting. But there are some things that we see in here that are like load. Oh, and I'm still stuck with this. Oh, why don't, when are you going to go away? Ever? Never? No, I have to close it manually. That, that reminded me of Melder. And as I say, there is some indication that Melder is in here somewhere. And of course, at the moment, I have to say, just watch out for bugs. Hopefully they will go away. There has been a response. Hopefully they'll go away and that bug may only affect Reason users, but just test it in your own door first, especially if you're looking at this and it's still on 1.0.0. All right, part two, the interesting bit where we get into what it really does. Now, they're largely working on the assumption from their marketing that we're going to be having people doing loopy-based things and doing stuff like this, putting in a drum loop, which is something that I um, programmed myself using lovely Studio Drums Legend. The reason I chose Legend in this case is because they are dry. I spoke about the rock standard as being wet, uh, and that is room. Goran has assured me that they are. that is the room. I figured it probably was. These, these are dry, so any changes we make are gonna be more honest. Turn this on. We don't really hear a difference. But there is a little bit of movement now outside of what we did have already. It's a little extreme now, so we can hear that that has become unstable. That's what it's doing. That's the side that they're selling all the time, so wow and flutter and dust. Broken machinery, warping, general kind of dirt, and then this feedback, which we should keep minor if we're only looking to seem more cool with our boring loops. Not that I think the boring drums are boring. Now we can hear a in time, so obviously this seems to be moving time, which is exactly what it's designed to do, but I think it may be feeding some sort of PDC back as well to keep things in time. I haven't tested its timingness, but most things seem to have been well thought through, so I assume that it is from the fact that it's kind of doing this little bit of a lurch. But levels are staying fairly well where they should, uh, but we've just added this kind of well, I think made the drums sound bad personally, but we are overdoing things here. That's the main pitch of the plugin. But as I've said, I think that's actually really what it's not good at. It's good at doing the ensemble thing. Let's stop that. Presets. Yes, there are presets. Root is where you find in it. They've got a lot of buttons along the top here, including a random, which I always find sort of silly and pointless. Um, learn your device, kiddies. Don't hit random buttons. It means that you're not in control of your own art. You can't call it your art if you're just hitting a button. It's just like going to one of those silly AI art things and then saying, I made this picture, I'm an artist. No, you pressed a button. And the work, the hard work of several other true artists has been collaged together, so you can pretend you know what you're doing. Not cool, not cool at all, it's called plagiarism. But you have to find the init button here rather than up here. Uh, there are various sounds which are all pitched towards this kind of... 
The upside, I guess, of this not closing itself down is that you can audition things. And honestly, that's not the... What is this for? So remember, I'm taking this rather flat sound. situation but apart from the silly um failing machine thing rather cool that's nice let's give this more of the sound that it was really designed to do meant to sound. We're adding a lot of thickness. We've still got this, we've already got this chorus wide sound, but this is adding a lot of thickness. So for a pad sound that we want to embiggen behind the mix, doing a stellar job. Though there's quite a few of these sorts of things, some in the room. As I point out, some of them are just too trying to be clever. And if you ever worked with old reverb units, this is how they sounded. Some of these are far too heavy handed. And these are just nasty ones. Don't know what these ones are about. Well, generally sounding terrible, so we will bypass those. But there are a ton of presets for those who are preset obsessed. Now we'll work our way through this. Let's turn everything down for the moment because there are quite a few sections. They do work together, but we'll work through this fairly methodically. We will go back to our sound being... Okay, rigid, no movement. That's exactly what we want. And now all movement that we hear is from here. As you hear, it wanders and we are hearing the actions activities of number one LFO number one voice one two three and four but we're just hearing the one if we want to hear more then we go over here but we don't for the moment that on its own is a little sort of like oh is that it Control the depth of it here. You can control the depth of these filters from here. So by default, it's a little annoying. It's not actually moving. But as soon as we add this, and it's moving at the same rate as our main LFO, you've got options later. So you can set your um, high and low pass filters to be swoopying around as well. Now Vibe controls everything that's in here. So any changes that you made, including degradation type stuff, is controlled by the overall vibe knob and vibe meaning how much of everything that we're doing everywhere else in the plugin is being assigned here everything is essentially an lfo or a bunch of 
LFOs. <laughs> and so the vibe knob is merely the modulation depth. And that's for everything. Everything really works on modulation more than much else. And so that's the level of it. Cool. Fair enough. It then comes to how things are mixed. Let's go a little heavy-handed. Normally when you come to an effect unit, you'll have some sort of combination of dry and then adding the wet. In this instance, they've separated them, which I'm pleased with. It makes perfect sense to do, and I often defer to having separate wet and dry controls, but if you do want them linked, it is possible to link them in this sort of a way. So nice thinking that he's given us all the options. Obviously, the main pitch that is being made in selling this is in the whole kind of thing, in which case you don't want it to sound chorusy, you just want it to sound messed up. Hence the dry defaulting to down and the wet to all the way up. Obviously, because we've no wet, we've got nothing. And whilst we're here, there's the ability to bring in the extra voices. Now, I don't think that this is a switch anywhere near so much as a level. So if this was a switch, we'd have no number two and then clunk, number two comes on. Clunk, number three, clunk, number four. But we don't, it's smooth. And there is something different in between. So this is actually progressively turning them all up. So if we watched a graph, we would see the whole graph like this, rise and fall. It's neither right nor wrong, and while it makes it a little harder to have a an exact, actually no, it's not that hard to have an exact number because it shows on the readout. I hadn't noticed that. I was busy looking at this. But yes, one would assume that at two, the number reading two here, that we will have a perfect mix of one and two without three and four being in the ball game. That's what one would assume. But the choice is a very reasonable one, and we can be listening to anywhere from one voice through to four voices with some kind of balance inside. How the balance is made is not entirely explained, but reason would suggest that it merely turns the levels up as we go from the way that it looks. Interesting decision and probably, probably a good one. Uh, so that's how your mix knob works and your voices. That's all fairly simple, but take your time to understand, to gloss across it, you'll actually not get how what's wonderful about this plugin really works. Then we've got the LFO. The heart, as they say, is in this LFO. We've got the LFO rate, which goes from pretty slow. I've seen slower, but slow enough to be, you know, not but we can still hear that movement. It would be nice if it went slower, but I'm not going to bitch about it. We can choose between sine or triangle wave. No other options are available. Well, there are ways to modify this wave, which we'll get into later. But this still has a noticeably chorusy effect. If it went slower, then I wouldn't complain. But it's a reasonable, usable range up to 10 hertz, which is generally too fast. It's not getting into FM territory. Being me, I'd be very tempted to put buttons to go even slower and even faster, or even just one button which moved from a very low range to sort of normal, maybe topping at eight or 10 or whatever, and then flip the button and suddenly it will go too stupid. Because why not? Uh, but nonetheless, the range here is practical all round. Obviously, if we're doing this, so you can use it to do vibrato. We then got the ability to scale because all of this is the one LFO, and if we're using it to, let's say, handle our low-pass filter, 
Everything's locked together. But if we offset our pitch and our filter and now moving off kilter with each other. The range is from half the speed to twice the speed. So you can hear wow 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 because they are still locked together. So there'll always be a relationship between the two of them which is not really the same as random. There are good things about that because you build a kind of pattern out of it. The bad thing about that is that you build a pattern out of that. And the pattern becomes regular, reliable, and either uber cool in your mind because you've built this kind of pattern, and that can be great. Uh, but the downside is that you've built this pattern that after a while the human brain can just choose to ignore. Uh, so where you want not wanting people to be aware of the pattern, you uh, might hope for a little bit more randomness. Uh, how you achieve that, I'm not sure, but my first thought would be to find a way to move these, which would be automation, which, well, this is Reaper, so it has extra things, but I didn't get to test its automation in reason, or I didn't get that far, um, but I should imagine it would probably work, uh, in which case you could be moving some of these somehow, probably would be using these, which is going to give you a better sense of random than just having this constant moving pattern. But nonetheless, you can change the rate of the LFO offset against the main LFO for both high and low pass filters based upon the modulation amount here. It does take a little bit to understand it. And as I've said, the, the more you understand about architecture of effects, the more value you'll get from this. If you come in just following their purple bouncing ball, you'll probably miss most of what this can really do, which is a shame. So we set our LFO rate and our shape. Generally, the sine wave's going to be the, the smoother of the two. You can tend to hear a switching. So your triangle, while it should be smoother, tends to actually have a noticeable switch point, which makes you think, oh, it's a square wave. But there'll always be a little bit of, of a, uh, a sort of a switch rate happening. Let's just turn these off to make sure they don't cause us a problem later. We then move to these filters, which we've already kind of looked at. Let's just turn this out of the, the game for the moment. got a high pass and a low pass, each with the ability to be two pole or four pole. They are polite filters in that they don't have any kind of lumpiness and even at full resonance. They come across as reasonably smooth. Yes, there's some stepping in there, but that's probably just knob control. Uh, my guess is if you automate them, they're probably going to be pretty darn smooth. Uh, so it's a nice sounding filter. It's not the filter that I would say that you're necessarily going to want to apply to make the world's chunkiest um, mini bass. But they've got a nice, probably Oberheimy kind of feel. Uh, their, their limits are in some ways a strength too. They're musical and... They're nice, and they're not going to be particularly intrusive. So if we want to lighten up the, the weight of a string sound, and if like space string, it doesn't have a filter, use this to sculpt that sound. Resonance, however, is shared by both. Little limit, but I guess he was more concerned probably with how the, the knob layout was and wanted all the space and the perfect pretend 1984 look. But it's not really a killer. 
because they're nice sounding filters and, and it doesn't get too aggressive. You can always filter off board if you need something more precise, but they are nicely chosen filters for the job. And remember, of course, we can modulate them. At the moment, they're modulating the same as each other. Now they're moving differently from each other, but because they're still locked by this central one, there's still a relationship between each other, which, as I say, can be swings and roundabouts. My preference would always, always be, let's see how we can disconnect them. Let's have real organic movement. Because uh, while organic systems do create a rhythm, the rhythms tend to be larger than, than the human brain will encompass in the short term. Or we will try to impose a rhythm that's not quite there which we will still do if there's true randomness. But nonetheless, nice sound. Of course, we can then mix in more voices. Those more voices won't really do anything at the moment until we send them through the mod modulation. So remember how everything is related to everything else. These look separate but they're all how everything relates to everything else. And the balance of how things relate to each other, in other words, the balance of these knobs, is going to define the results that we get. Cool. Let's reset these. Default. Default. We've then got these extra features. We'll set this to high because as we add flutter, flutter is not acting on the signal alone. Nope, nothing, no movement. As we add the modulation depth and then flutter. So flutter is actually operating on the LFO rate. Took me a little bit to learn that and I had to confirm that in the manual, but it's the depth of flutter is not separate from this. I see swings and roundabouts on that. It's more efficient CPU wise uh, and mechanically definitely to have this affecting this. Um, I can also see an argument as to why you might want that completely separate. So in other words, if you didn't want any LFO happening of any kind, but you just wanted the flutter, but the flutter doesn't exist without the LFO. But you can dial up quite a lot of flutter and have a fairly minor LFO amount. Static. Something more lively because there is a shake in the sound. You can't consciously say, oh, that shake's there, but it's there. Flat as a biscuit without chocolate chips. Minor change, but big win. That is the bit that they're selling about the whole retro thing. But it's not the greatest strength because there are, well, you've probably got a, lots of ways to do that in your door already, but this does handle it nicely and it does solve the problem or appears to solve the problem of offsetting the time things that occur with this. At least I think it does. Whatever. Don't know. Don't care. It's inevitable with this process that there will be some time issues. I don't recall being in the manual. Oh, before I forget. Yes, you can resize everything. And that's nice. Seems to work. There's something in the right click too to with all kinds of stuff. Oh, oversampling. The all important oversampling and sizes and this, that and the other. Yes, yes, yes. Very exciting. So Flutter adds a, another LFO or pair of LFOs or something. It changes, and so it makes our LFO here. Dance about. And with care, that is really, really nicely done. 
We then got dust. Again, this is acting upon the LFO. So it's applying noise, a kind of noise, a dusty sort of noise, kind of like, well, dust on a record, sort of, to the LFO. So it's not actually adding noise to the signal, it's adding it to the LFO. Again, hear how the sound just does a little bit of a jump because suddenly it's moving around and it's constant moving around in ways that's harder for us to predict makes the ear go, ooh, exciting. Cool. Fail. I, well, I failed to find that interesting, but it's some sort of loose modernistic silly idea of um, that all our machines back in 1984 were constantly glitching. Um, okay. That one does seem to work outside of the LFO. Um, use it if you want. I'm not sure that I would ever find a musical use for that. Warp again seems to work outside of this. That it moves things around a little bit again. You can hear as you move it that things move. I think it's a much slower movement. And it seems to be controlling things separately. So the first couple are controlling the LFO, meaning that you've got to raise this to get anything out of them. Then these two, so it's the, the slight inconsistency. Wouldn't mind a little line or something to say, these ones are not like the other ones. And then dirt. I do believe that this is distortion of some kind. Because it's again not influenced by this. So a little bit of all of these. With even very slow movement here. does justify the initial claims that are being made, but all the presets kind of really overdo it. But the presets are about um, saying, look how amazeballs we are, rather than look how useful we are. And then there's this feedback. Feedback is got two possible uses. One is in the short term, adding a little bit of feedback back into the system, which with old or poor or imperfect electronics, rotten electronics or deliberateness it's not unusual to have a little bit of feedback as a little bit of the signal leaks back in this is feeding apparently all the voices back across into each other so even if you're running one voice i think you're hearing the results of the other voices in the feedback it's not clarified I'm not sure. Maybe it's feeding what we're hearing back in, but again, like most manuals, it really doesn't clarify what we hear in that situation, but it doesn't entirely matter. It feeds back. Small amounts will give you a bit more of that. Oh, this is her real electronics, especially less than um, super well-designed electronics would work. If there. It's very easy to be a little excessive. And believe me, things didn't sound that bad back then. They really didn't. Maybe if it was uh, a Selena that had been left in, uh, in the sun and the rain for a while, it sounded that bad, but they didn't sound that bad. But it gives you a fair range of ability to do interesting things. Things. A 
And then there is this mono button, which sums to mono. And as I've said, seems to give the impression of raising level. Maybe it doesn't just because it pulls in, but on reason I really did seem to be getting a change in level. And we are seeing it here too. It's not huge, but we're definitely seeing something. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. As I put it in the possible bug report on that one, it wasn't a killer, it just might offend some of those who are level matching obsessed. Uh, but that's what it does, it just sums your whole signal back to mono. There are times where that's a really good thing. Personally, I probably would have put a collapse knob so that you put the, the person could choose where between fully wide and squished they wanted to be. But nonetheless, it's a, it's a good thing to have. Any decent mixing board should have some kind of thing, but I'm amazed how many door things don't. They don't have a gain on the top of the channel and they don't have a stereo collapse thing. You have to in, add some other device to do that, but whatever. Now, the last lot on the other side is called Diverge. We will go out into many voices for this. This spreads the voices. So that's your unison spreadify. Now at this point we see that these LFOs are offset from one another. Just resync them. So they're cycling. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is the essence of uh, chorus design, like Juno chorus design, but very much of ensemble. Because where you've got one voice, we can hear, let's get rid of this for now. Especially with just the dry. Let's flatten this. And when we go out into stereo, We can hear it rocking side to side. When we introduce a second voice, if that second voice is completely opposite phase, as one goes down, the other goes up. So we get less of the woo 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 woo, -woo feel and more of a broad feel. It's improved that if we're looking to get an ensemble, as in we have now got two violinists, one who's playing slightly sharp, one who's playing slightly flat without them constantly going sharp and flat, which is not normal. <laughs> Wonderful sounding when you get right, but not normal. Then as we add the third and fourth voices, we've got our peak here and here, and then we've got our peaks here and here in the middle of it. So if we were to draw a sine wave multiplied by four, then we would appear to have a very even up and down all at the same time giving something that's a fair bit like having a pitch shifter that shifts the pitch up, leaves the original, and shifts the pitch down, therefore giving us the feeling of many voices, all just being kind of evenly out of tune with each other. This is an ensemble, the early version of what we now call unison, and much nicer than unison because there's a lot of movement. Remember, these sounds are always oscillating between in tune, out of tune, and therefore, rather than just being stuck there, they are constantly moving. So we've got this really nice, chewy, rich sound. Depending upon how deep we want to go. If we put our dry back in, Mono. Or a full spread. Anywhere in between can be good. We've got voice scaling. So this scales the LFO rate. So you see these are all even. They're all behaving properly. That seems to turn itself off when there's no signal. Fair enough. If we change the rate of 
voice 2, see how it's not really keeping sync with voice 1 here. They're a little all over the place now. If we take voice 3, change its rate, and again, remember, this is just offsetting from the central rate, so there's still always going to be that relationship. And voice 4. We can now hear a less even, we haven't got that sort of feeling of a perfect pitch shifting art. We've got... And that can be very nice. Neither is right nor wrong. Phase nearly controls the phase of things. If we reset, actually I need to put all these back to default value. You see me hitting the reset button every now and then. Reset will simply send everything back. It'll restart your LFO. So if you've done something like set one of these out of order, putting it back, will not automatically pull it back. Quick reset, now they're all behaving the way that you would want them to. Phase changes the phase relationship. Not a massive difference, necessarily. But then, and this is one of my favorite things about this, we've got this lag knob. Lag normally means to smooth something out, but in this case, lag means we're just introducing lag. We're introducing wasted time, a latency. So you can hear those extra voices. One. So they're now a little bit more scattered in time. On its own, potentially limited in use. But if you want to change the sound of your chorus a little, Hear how that's richer. It becomes more church organ than, than Selena, but there's no right or wrong. It gives you that option to do that. But it's really in conjunction with the feedback that this comes alive. You can hear that that's now become a kind of reverb. Let's go back to our drums. Now, while this in no way is going to compete with um, you know, a, a high quality reverb unit, it's not meant to. This is a character reverb. I've talked about them lots of times. Hertz Delay was designed to do this. Hertz Multiply was designed to be able to do this and actually use it quite a lot for that. Um, most of my reverbs that I use in most of my mixes, commercial and personal, are actually these kinds of reverbs, because once you pile a few of these up, you end up with something that's truly unique. I just struggle personally with the uh, perfect, and dare I be emotive and say somewhat bland, sound of your perfect um, something or other pro reverb. That's not to say they're bad, in times they can be wonderful, but the, the years where reverb was very strong in mixes, the kinds of reverbs that we were hearing were like this. Uh, so they, they may not seem that way when you listen to Cliffy Bastard um, talking about how we don't uh, talk anymore or singing about Carrie and how she done disappeared. Uh, it's this to a great extent 
Yes, at the time they were the most amazeful reverbs, uh, but they give a feel which is different from. So don't write this off as being, oh, well, that's just garbage. There's a massive joy to be had in these. Even with you here, here, be adding a little bit of lovely space to those drums, which you might then feed into your perfect reverb. Going out here, we start to get into a real kind of um, very early 80s. So think of something like Bauhaus's um, Bella Lugosi is dead. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Uh, that would have been done with a delay line, but we've got that same kind of feel happening in here. So if we want to modulate our reverbs, our filters a little bit, add some flutter, some dust. Bugger the fail not. Don't like it. <laughs> but let's add it anyway. It adds some movement to it, might be a win for you. Not Benedict's cup of tea. And this, if you want to keep your levels the same, you can... But I still rather that it be additive. So small, too large. And I think that's wonderful. So few devices offer the breadth to be able to go right outside of, well, the box, so to speak. Uh, I, I think I'm one of the few people that I know of as a, as a developer who is allowing this kind of breadth. There are some cool devices like um, Valhalla, who allows a lot of movement, but then in some other areas, it's just really, really like, that's what you're going to do. And that puts me off the devices wholesale, despite all the wonderful things that are there. Whereas something like this that says, here's a whole pile of range. As you've noticed, there are some things like the LFO range. I would personally have expanded the range or options, same with the mono button. But nonetheless, the, the total range of this device, if you know what you're doing, is impressive. Which means its value for money is very high. Um, because if you use it as much as, let's say, the amount I use the Echo, which is the, um, the, the delay line that comes standard in Reason, I could never put a price on it. Uh, I, I said this to, to Goran with his drums where he was putting was, was this and then indicating that was its true value. The true value of the Echo alone, that one device, or if, let's say, Europa or Thor, for the amount of value that I've got out of it, it's like it's like having to go steal the Queen's or the King's crown jewels to hand over because the, the value that I've gotten from those devices is inestimable. And I kind of have the feeling, even though I have not been able to use this in battle, curse you bugs, uh, that this has a value that's pretty darn high, way in excess of any reasonable amount of money that's being asked. Another one that I'm like that with is um, the ADHD leveling tool. Uh, I gave several cups of coffee to uh, the developer for it, and I'm laughing all the way, I can tell you, because the, the amount of value I get from that device is absurd because it works every time. This one is kind of like that, so I really, really like the device. I still loathe the marketing but I'm doing my best to forget about it um, because it's not what the device is really about, at least for what I'm after. Yes, it can do those things, but it's not its greatest strength. Its greatest strength is in this four-voice chorus slash ensemble or ensemble slash chorus and your ability to then do all these other things, including the kind of mungifying of sounds. So I think it's a really wonderful device with a superb architecture that misdirects and the, the people who are going to get the most value from it and panders to those who are going to get the least value from it. If that helps you sell more devices in the short term, great. 
does it shoot you in the foot, though? Because if it wasn't for me being specifically asked to review this, possibly, I think, even at your request, I'm, I'm not sure where the request came from, Mr. JMG, but if it came directly from you, if it hadn't been for that, then I would have never looked at it, meaning that somebody who would, well, use this ex tremendously, you know, take it into the heart as much as something like maybe the Echo or Europa or whatever. You know, you've got your own devices that you're like that with, you know, it's like, get away from me, you can have my girlfriend, my wife, my children, you're not taking this device. You're probably excluding those people, which is, well, that's up to you. So overall, really nice device. Again, if you are particularly in reason, please make sure that you at least check version number or run a demo first to see that you don't have little crashy washies. Hopefully that does get resolved. My having raised the bug has been acknowledged, which hopefully suggests that it will be sorted. This has also, uh, once I've dug into it and gone, ooh, there's a nice architect behind this, made me question, should I be looking at some of his other devices? Which the marketing in every case of those devices basically made me think, yeah, I don't think so. That's not a credible product. Uh, so I might have a look at some other things once I'm done having a look and a play with this and preferably getting that bug fixed so that I can actually throw it into battle and see how it really grows with me because I think it is a grower. Benedict for Higher Hertz. Don't forget higherhertz.com. There are lots of other videos and there's also articles on the .com as well. Not all of them saying the same thing as me either. Curse you, people who don't agree. Uh, if you have questions, please not about the manufacturer because that's to the manufacturer. Uh, but any of the true content that I've put in here, hit subscribe, type in your question below. And once I'm aware of it, uh, I will give an answer. Most importantly, get out there, have fun with this. This is actually a really interesting device once you dig in. Have a great day.